feel okay. Nope. We're stealing it. We're not stealing it. <laughs> Hey guys, head to Caffeine Octane Presents That Dude in Blues Just Drifted on June 11th, 2022 with unlimited sea time drifting, drift games, halftime show, and much more. Tickets are on sale in the description below or at the gate. Like them or not, Lamborghinis are absolutely nuts. <laughs> a text from Ed Bolian from Vinwicky and said, would you like to drive the Murcielago SV, which is one of the rarest Lamborghinis ever made. And I really wanted to see if the most expensive Lamborghini Murcielago ever sold was actually worth it and how much different it was from the previous cars. So let's go for a ride and talk all about the legendary Murcielago SV. Before we get started with today's video, I just want to give a huge thanks to today's sponsor, Upstart. It can be really hard to see the light at the end of the tunnel if you have high interest debt, but sometimes it can be even harder to ask for help, and that's where Upstart comes in. Upstart Power Loans can help you pay down high interest debt, all in line with simple and easy to understand payment terms. And Upstart has helped over 1.8 million customers on their path to financial freedom. Whether it's paying off credit cards or consolidating high interest debt or funding personal expenses, Upstart can help you get one fixed monthly payment with a clear payoff date. And Upstart knows that you're more than just your credit score. So rather than just looking at your credit score alone, Upstart considers other factors like income, employment, and other information information in your loan application to find you a smarter rate for your loan. And you can check your rate in just minutes for loans between $1,000 and $50,000 without impacting your credit score. And you can receive funds as fast as one business day after accepting your loan. So don't wait and check your rate today at upstart.com slash blue. That's upstart.com slash blue to check your rate today. And don't forget to use our URL to let them know we sent you. And go to upstart.com slash blue. Feel okay? Nope. We're stealing it. We're not stealing it. <laughs> Ed, we have a great history of filming cars together. I'm actually really excited for this one. Uh, this one in particular was a Top Gear special to me. For people who aren't into Lamborghinis as much, what makes the SV special in a crash course kind of way? Sure, so it's the Super Veloce version of the Murcielago. Well, <laughs> Lambo you know, things. Walking. <laughs> so it comes from an era where the cars are still a little bit old feeling, but to mm -hmm. me that makes them feel even more special. Right. They said they were going to make 350 of them. They didn't. They actually said they made 186, but in reality it appears they made about 260. Uh, only 44 of them made it to the U.S., and as far as I can tell, this was the only car painted in bright red I, for the I, whole world. I've never seen one in red, uh, ever. Well, Murcielago's in red. You don't really see that often. True, feel yeah. Like. Always kind of a reserved for Ferrari color, but I think it fits it. You know, I, I bought it because yeah. it was the cheapest one on earth because the whole front of it got knocked off in a horrific accident <laughs> in, in the most bullion way possible. Exactly. Lending me Gallardos that run out of gas. <laughs> First thing I notice in the SV is your seating position is very different. That like, is correct. For you, is it more difficult? Because I feel like I'm sitting higher. Yes, okay. it is problematic. Uh, so I have got to find a set of regular seats for it because okay. if I sit up straight, this is the reality. Of it. Wow. Yeah, it's a big, big car. It's about as wide as you're allowed to build one legally. Okay, mission accomplished. We got gasoline. Uh, 22 gallons, in fact. That's right. Out of a 24 gallon. <laughs> this is also the essentially the same engine in the normal Murcielagos, right? The LP640s? Right. Yeah, the six and a half liter. 12. It's just an upgraded version, essentially. Yeah, or yeah, just a slight tune. It's 630 power. horsepower in okay. the regular one, 660 in these. So our records in the Vinwiki app showed that it was a U.S. car that was in a pretty bad accident in 2016, but it was rebuilt in Hungary. And wow, okay. I bought it from a guy in Germany who had contacted me because he was confused about why it said 257. And right. so what probably happened is that during the rebuild, they contacted Lamborghini and Lamborghini's records are not very good about such things. No and they probably just guessed wrong. <laughs> Because 257 is a black car in Miami, so there's only wow. 44 US SVs. It, it kind of shrinks as you push it harder. Sure. Uh, it's a phenomenally capable car, really strong all-wheel drive system. Obviously, 
obviously makes a lot of power, but it has a lot of torque. And that was the biggest improvement from the Gen 1 Mercies, the 6.2 cars, sure. to the 6.40s was tremendous torque increases. The big wing is like it on this car. That's like it's it. really helps. I mean, it's funny how the Mercia Lago has always been a good looking car in my opinion, but when you add all these aero bits onto it, it just gave it a whole new personality that I think it really needed. Obviously at the end of the model run, the worldwide economy was not very strong, particularly right. in the US, and so they did not sell well at all. And that's generally the recipe for a car to be long-term appreciated, is that right. they're really cool, but they don't sell well new. Wrong Same. place, wrong time. Exactly. And you know, these cars, this one's like a 498 MSRP. And God so dang, they wow. were expensive. In 2010. Exactly. Right. So good. I think they're the best sounding cars on earth. People rave about LFAs and Carrera GTs, but I think the howl of a uh, big Lambo V12 is as good as it gets. <laughs> thing i mean a diablo is the ultimate poster card to me the yeah. countach arguably even more so but to me this just is so diablo much plus more one. usable while still being at least 90 percent as cool if not 100 percent as cool yeah i mean a gt is a thing but. <laughs> and it handles like it that's what it feels good Eight of them, and they were going to retire them. They have like forty to sixty thousand miles, and 
you know, a lot of different parts put together, but you know, they're real cars. And as soon as Monte Rimmick took over, he said, no, we're no. not gonna put those cars out Unbelievable. Of public. And so I uh, ended up not getting that car, unfortunately. And uh, that's when this car became available. So I was able wow. to free up some space and some cash. And kind of, kind of stars aligned in a different way. Yeah, exactly. So, I will say though, out of all the cars we've reviewed together, I think we've had to talk the loudest in this one. For on sure. The, on the highway, because even though the Scud feels like a gutted race car, yes. like this, I just noticed there's a little bit more tire noise, wind noise. I mean, we have massive tires all the way around, yeah, right? Yeah, P-Zero courses without sound deadening on a concrete highway <laughs> is uh, not the recipe for conversation. No. I think one thing you wanted to talk about, too, was the Enzo versus this argument. Even though the Enzo is an 03, 04-ish car, yep. this is a 2010, they're priced similarly. And this is probably a better car. I think it's a better car in every way. I think so, too. And Enzo is brilliant. Obviously, it's the ultimate Ferrari they could build at the time. But, you know, they're pretty much identical horsepower, identical spec, speed, everything. All-wheel drive versus rear-wheel drive, but big, naturally aspirated V12s with single-clutch sequential annual transmissions. You know, an Enzo was 660 new, this was right. about 500, but today an Enzo is 2 million. The, the cheapest one of these that's for sale right now is about 1.3, but wow. there are, you know, less than half as many of them, and uh, to me, just as cool as they could possibly get. Now, you do, when you drive one of these, have to make a little bit of an apology, particularly at low speed, about the gearbox. I mean, right. certainly the ultimate version is a manual SV, but there's only five, maybe six Which, of them. Which, I want to add, I had no idea. Because, you know, on Top Gear is an e-gear car. Everything yeah. else was like, this is the fastest Porsche Lago, and your brain goes, oh, so they used e-gear to make it the fastest one, right? But it's amazing that they even made it in manual, period. But you said they were special order cars. Yeah, they were, so those were all ordered order by them. a person. So most of them are with their original owners. Of the three U.S. cars, one is driven like I would. It's got 32,000 miles. That's Roy Cat's car. Awesome. Uh, one of them was crashed really badly and totaled. Uh, and at the time, you know, the insurance paid out like eight hundred fifty or nine hundred thousand dollars. Wow! Now, that car, perfect, would be worth four or five million. The, uh, and then there's one that's still really, really nice. It's got four or five thousand miles on it. Doesn't get driven all that much. It's a matte white car. Got it. So like, I don't yeah, well, this one was stolen, and then this one I found crashed, and then and you just you just kind of find these really interesting stories, just like your Paracel no, uh, SLR. Oh, we did that one too. I yeah. that, that, I just got that one back. That's right. All right, we've had our fun. <laughs> That's a good mercy. <laughs> I'm not sure if I had to pick one out of the three mercies, the manual coupe, manual roadster, or the e-gear SV, which one it is. I think that- Because you're hardcore manual. I usually. Am. And as you noticed, like moving this car around at low speed is cumbersome because of the yeah, gearbox. Yeah, you, you have to think about it. It's funny, it's like, if you had a normal clutch, you're like, yeah, I'm just moving. Exactly. You don't have to worry about that wear. That's, it's very involuntary. Like I did it earlier and I yeah. fully admit it. I just didn't realize it. And if somebody didn't know, yeah, they'd burn it out instantly. And plenty of people did. So there's a lot of these cars that have, I mean, this car has 7,800 miles on it and the clutch is about 60 to 70% worn already. Oh, wow. When I drive one and I measure it over like 10,000 miles, usually I have about one millimeter of wear on the clutch and right. they, they have about seven and a half millimeters of lifespan. So driven properly, e-gear or manual, you can get 70, 80,000 miles out of a clutch. Now, I've never bought one with a brand new clutch and so I, uh, I'll have to replace it on this one eventually. But at the end of the day, they, they're really usable cars. Well, I mean, I'm in fifth gear right now and I just breeze by traffic like I'm you're big towing it and it's still usable it's not like there's turbo lag or anything it's just in a torque going all the time and the good thing is you don't have to downshift and be insanely obnoxious you know to make a statement nice and smooth it will add as always appreciate your time I had a wonderful time this was a great experience I think the SV is definitely one of my favorite exotics I've driven I, I think it just the way I sit in it too, I think the CD position for me really helped. I know it's annoying for you, but it helps me a lot. Because when you're all the way down here, it's a little more like, oh God, I really can't see. But anyway, everybody go check out Ed's channel, VinWiki. It's wonderful. Great car track stories, everything. It's an amazing time. And on that note, I upload on Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Sundays. Thanks again, Ed.
I'll see you guys. Bye.